just to introduce what we're doing here. So this is an introduction to R for those people that have never had any R experience before. So it doesn't assume any coding experience, previous coding experience. It starts from the absolute beginning. And I'm going to try and teach you something about how to import some data, tidy it up a bit, um, conduct a bit of an analysis and uh, figures and present it. And then the whole thrust of the sessions, if you like, is to try and teach some universal concepts. So although what I'm talking about is specific to R, a lot of the concepts that I'll be mentioning actually apply in all programming languages. So if you've got previous experience of coding of any kind, some of the ideas might be familiar to you. If you haven't, then you're going to gain those ideas and hopefully you'll be able to transfer them to other environments if you choose to work in other environments in the future. So what it isn't, it's not an introduction to statistics. So I'm not going to be introducing lots of statistical techniques. It's all about learning to use R itself. And then the other thing which it isn't, I'm afraid, is uh, magic. So we've got a couple of hours here together now um, in which I'm going to cover a bit of coding. But to learn R well, or even use it regularly as a not particularly skilled user, you still have to practice an awful lot. So the goal really would be to get you into a position where you have some motivation to, and willingness to want to practice, let's say an hour or a couple of hours a week doing almost any kind of practice, it doesn't matter, you'll learn something from that. So I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of an overview of why we would use scripting at all, uh, why we'd use R to do that, and a little bit of an introduction to the organisation of data and, and analyses in general. Okay, so why do we bother scripting? So the main reason is that it makes our work totally reproducible. So this is my sort of overview of how we do uh, research in general. You have um, tests of ideas that you want to carry out, which might be exper experiments that you would do in a laboratory or something in biology, or they might be um, on collecting data or survey design and so on. And then you have a phase of your work in which you're designing the data generation or data collection and actually executing it. And then a phase of your work where you've got all your results and you're interpreting and reporting and visualizing. So the way we make sure that our tests of ideas are reproducible is to properly record in some kind of protocol or in a materials and methods section or a lab book or all of those things exactly what our process was. Even so, it's quite difficult to actually reproduce results completely just because things are so variable. But nonetheless, we make a real effort to try and record those methods to ensure that our work is actually reproducible. The reporting part of it, this is the bit that should be wholly and completely reproducible. So it should be the case that anybody could take your data and then take your publication or your report or whatever it is and completely reproduce it. However, it's often the case that this is actually the least reproducible bit. So it's often the case that people struggle to reproduce figures they produced previously or to get from their results, their raw results to the results they actually wrote up. And all of that part is made reproducible by scripting. So I think this is the primary reason why scripting is better than using programs like SPSS or um, Excel and so on. By reproducing the analysis and interpretation and reporting completely, that includes everything you do with your data. So from importing it, the raw data that you've got out of your survey or out of your experiment, right the way through to doing all the sort of tidying up that you might have to do to make it analyzable, any kind of transformations you might have to do on that data to make it um, robust and comparable, any exploration you might do, any statistical testing you might do, and the reporting part, all of that 
can be and should be reproducible. So why do we use R? Uh, you, you don't have to use R. Uh, it is open source and free, which means there is not only a large number of packages available for doing a whole wide variety of different analyses, and most problems you have are ones that other people have encountered previously. Um, but it also means there's this open source community associated with R, which means that um, problems get resolved quickly. There's generally a lot of tutorials online and all the sort of training or much of the training is free or cheap in comparison to what there might be for SPSS, let's say. Um, but these things are also true of Python. Um, and there's no reason why you can't use Python if you want to, if that's what you're used to using. But R has a reputation for being good for people who don't see themselves as programmers and allows them to slide gradually into programming. So it was designed for doing data analysis and graphics, whereas Python is a general purposing purpose programming language, which will allow you to solve programming problems in general. So it's, it's more widely used for that reason, because it applies to everything. R is designed very much for data analysis and visualization, which means that doing those types of things are often easier to do in R than they are in Python. But I think probably the strongest reason for especially newcomers to take up R in particular is that the R community is one of the most inclusive and supportive of programming environment, programming communities. So it has a culture of being helpful to new people um, there's a lot of tutorials and so on online, and that tends to make it a little bit easier to learn. It's also quite diverse in comparison to other programming languages. So there's quite a high proportion of female and minorities in R in comparison, particularly to things like Python, where it's like 90% white cis males. There are a couple of uh, organizations I've put here um, R Forwards, which is for underrepresented groups, and R Ladies, um, which is female based um, groups that do a lot of training to try and increase representation in general in the R community. Okay, and the other excellent thing about R is it has this thing called R Markdown, which is a reporting tool which allows you to do both the writing about your analysis and the analysis itself all in the same document. So just to summarize, it's an introduction to reproducible analyses rather than statistics. Um, it's not gonna be enough on its own. You will need to practice, um, but hopefully you'll be a bit motivated to do so. Um, scripting is what makes your work reproducible, which is a huge asset for working with fu future you or other people. And while I'm focusing on R, a lot of the principles I'm gonna talk about here do actually transfer to other environments.